Hello and welcome to Meet Sector 7. My name is Rinzo and this is part 2 of how to inject a interpreter into a remote machine, into a remote Linux machine, uh, in straight into the process memory without touching disk. So in a previous part we've discussed how to do it on a remote machine using Python. So we had our attack machine running Metasploit um, let's I'll show you the settings. So our handler is running and there are no active sessions. Okay. But on the victim machine, there is no Python. Okay. So what you can do in this scenario. So if you go back to uh, my blog post, and again, uh, the link to uh, to the blog post is down below uh, below the video. So, in this sc uh, scenario, you can use a DD um, tool. So DD is a simple simple tool, which basically takes an input file, does something with this, uh, some like so like conversion or whatever and saves the, the, the output into another file, okay? Now, how we can, uh, can we like use that for running out of shellcode? And it appears that it's possible if we force uh, DD to writing the output data, not into the, the file, but into itself. And to do that, we can use procfs. So what we are going to do, we are going to uh, give DD a shellcode on its input stream, and then point the output file to, onto itself, like its own me process memory, and DD will um, save that shellcode into its own memory. So in other words, it's going to be modifying its own process on the fly. Okay. Now, first of first of the things we need to know is where we can write our shellcode in the process memory. So let's uh, go to DD and let's try to figure out where where, where it can be done. So if you use uh, object dump tool, there are a lot of functions there, okay, and a lot of calls, etc. So we might try, so after some experimentation, um, a good candidate for uh, for writing a process is, uh, our routing our, uh, writing our shellcode is a place where fclose is being called, uh, since fclose is usually called at the end of the program, okay? So we have two offsets and potential offsets where our shellcode can be written. Now, um, the other problem we have is that is that DD is PI or um, position independent executable. So it means that if you run it um, uh, every time it it lands in a, on a different address um, space or on in different addresses uh, so maps let's remove this one and let's just focus on DD okay so as you can see every time I run the the addresses change so what we can do about it? Um, it appears that you can turn off uh, address space randomization. So with that switch, you it disables randomization of the virtual address space. So we just set arc. We need to provide it with architecture. And now 
every time um, DD runs, it lands at the same offset. Okay. So with two, these two things, um, we can do our uh, on the fly over, overriding of the DD process memory. Now we need uh, our shellcode. Um, so again, let's uh, generate one. So we're going to use 64 bit interpreter uh, version of reverse TCP pointing to our uh, MSF console, which is here, the same address, the port is the same, and we store it in a file. And after the process completes, we need to convert it. So we use the same example as in previous um, uh, part. So here's our shellcode. So we copy it. And we can run it. Uh, so again, let's uh, get this proc, uh, these um, offsets. And what we can do now is So set arc 86 and 64 and turn off ASLR DD output file is proc self mem memory block size is one seek somewhere and no trunk uh, trunking uh, so do not truncate after being called and now we need our addresses so we take this address plus so there are two offsets you can te test um, I did this test earlier so I know that this actually jump is being called uh, during runtime so I use uh, this offset. And if all is set OK, let me s switch back to our MSF console and hit enter. And here's our session. Get UID, get PID. The PID is 2811, that's correct. And we are running on the same machine. So again, ls of and process ID is 2811. And as you can see, we have our meta session established. So yeah, that's another technique you can use to run your interpreter session directly on a remote machine in the memory without touching disk. Okay. If you liked that video, please uh, subscribe and leave your comments below. Uh, the link to uh, to the uh, blog post will be also stored below the video. So thank you for watching and see you next time.